Hey guys, this is Project A, who plans to defend the Rook, which is uh, into the breach, similar to the Isle of Rogalite, with some vague chess elements and uh, like traditional tactics and stuff, but that's all implicit in into the breach. And you start with a, a warrior, a rogue, and a mage, so it's Diablo 1 classes, basically. But you, there are three different, so there's 12 different units in general and there's also alternate versions of every tower and every and the main defensive unit as well so all that stuff can be customized as you progress through the game a la um monster train i guess i think that makes a vague amount of sense to compare it to monster train that's probably the most uh, customizable roguelike as far as how many different options you have. Uh, this seems to be a similar level of customizability. I don't think you can block enemies from spawning, but I guess I didn't try. <laughs> Maybe you can, who knows. Does it do damage to you when he blocks them? That would be an into the reach thing. They probably just spawn in an adjacent square. Um, I guess it's also ostensibly tower defense, but the tower moves. Is, is it tower defense if the tower moves? I don't know. But anything that's uh, inspired by Into the Breach is probably pretty decent, because Into the Breach is the best indie game of all time, so... By a pretty wide margin, too. Uh, assuming you don't count a game like Shadow Tactics as an indie game. I guess that's a personal preference thing, but Shadow Tactics has like a 15 to 20 man team, so... That's not triple A, but also not indie. However you want to define that. That's like old school uh, classic RPG team signs. I guess Divinity and uh, Disco Elysium, are those indie games? That's another question. Probably not. But we could say. Um, what else? Is there to say? Oh, uh, your units gain experience after the battle, but they do not have individualized experience. So you don't have to focus on which one kills a unit, uh, as you would in Final Fantasy Tactics, for example. Uh, you could just spread the experience, or XCOM, XCOM, the first one. XCOM 2, I think that was less of an issue. It's still, it's still present, but not as much of an issue. Uh, Marvel, I think Marvel, it does matter which, which enemy or which hero kills something. Uh, meeting Marvel's Midnight Suns. Uh, the Sorceress seems to have some really overpowered stuff, like in the, in the level run, which won't be commentated, but it is in this video. I got uh, a corpse explode, and then a deal to all damage to enemy, or deal to damage to all enemies when you kill an enemy. Twice. So it does, every time she kills something, it does four damage to everything else. And if that stuff dies, then it corpse explodes and kills adjacent stuff, and then cascades. So you can, she can basically full clear the whole screen, depending on which enemy layout you go. So that's pretty nice. So probably not going to switch out the sorceress soon. Um, but pretty appealing game. Oh, okay. So this game is out on Steam. It doesn't come out on PlayStation or Xbox for three weeks, or more than three weeks. No, it's not quite three weeks. <laughs> Two and a half weeks. Like March 16th, I think, is the release date. But it's not under embargo because the Steam version has been out for a few years. Um, it does have the Hand of Fate narrator guy as well. That's, just, that's another thing that's going on with this game. Meaning the, the purple arminous hooded fellow. Arminus, is that what it said? Ominous, hooded fellow. Arminus. <laughs> Just making up random words here. Uh, so that's another inspiration that the game has, I guess. Uh, of course, it's the Hand of Fate team. I guess that doesn't really matter too much. Anything else that comes to mind? Hmm. I did want to try to keep talking until the... Uh, this is a really, really long tutorial, by the way. But this is, by the by, 
I could have just done the tutorial as a single video, but I wound up doing a level. Uh, I guess it was fun. Like it, I sort of lost track of time while I was playing it, so that's a good good sign for any roguelike. And oh, how much would you consider a tactics game to be chess-like? I think they are somewhat Go-like because of the grid style is much more similar to Go than it is to chess. Usually, there are some exceptions to this rule. Um, but would you consider Into the Breach a chess-like? <laughs> Just like roguelike. No, I just would call it a tactics game. End of the Breach is even more... or has more chess affiliations than this game does. But this one is called Defend the Rook. So, and has, like, castles. But tower defense, I think, is fair enough. But, but it's a mobile tower, so mobile tower defense. Um, I guess Into the Breach sort of has tower defense, too. But Into the Breach is more of a missile command than a tower defense. Um, these temporary powers seem like they could make or break your run, so that's probably where the Iron Jesus comes from. Because sometimes you're going to get, like, plus five health, <laughs> which, which I guess is useful, but it's not meaningful, it's not a buff. And then sometimes you get Oh, we want to kill an enemy, every other enemy on the screen dies too. Those, that's the range. <laughs> seems, seems pretty extreme. Uh, so just like the towers, whenever you're doing this specific element of the game, you probably want to fully upgrade a single unit, if you can, and then upgrade something else. But I guess in the case of the heroes, it's going to be more spread. But in the case of... Uh, Towers are just going to be fully upgrade one and fully upgrade another one. Don't bother with the incremental upgrades, as they call them here, uh, individually on each tower, because the only thing that's good for the towers is the final upgrade. Uh, I guess that's it for me talking. I think, I think that was a pretty clear explanation of the game. Seems like a pretty fun game. I don't have the Steam version, or I would probably play it on Steam Deck a bunch. Uh, but I have the PlayStation version. Um, which, generally speaking, I prefer the PlayStation version for virtually every game. Um, not only since I can talk about it, but it's just my preferred method of playing games. Uh, unless it's a real-time strategy, of course. Uh, FPS... Mm, well, I don't like competitive FPS at this point in my life anyway. But uh, Doom 2016 proved... And I guess Metal Hellsinger... Metal Hellsinger also plays well on a controller. Those games prove that you can do it on a controller. In a multiplayer setting, obviously, a mouse and keyboard is going to be better, but... Um, there's also an advantage to everyone using a controller. The flow of the game is different and behaves differently. So I'm not a super elitist about you must play on PC for shooters anymore, if I ever was. I, I try to keep an open mind on that topic. So, sure. So for example, Tarkov probably plays better on PC if it theoretically had a console port. But if you played it on console and everybody else was playing it on console as well, the flow of the game would be different and probably more enjoyable. So it really doesn't matter. Um, Warzone, if you're playing with PC players, is different than Warzone if you're playing with console players, etc., etc. Overwatch, there doesn't really seem to be an advantage to playing on PC. <laughs> Uh, just by the design of the game. So it's, an, it's not an Unreal Tournament Quake 3 situation where they are unfathomable on console. Uh, that's, that style of game has changed. I will say Doom Eternal has better PC controls than it has console controls, but Doom 2016 does not. Doom 2016 is a better game for starters, but... Uh, it actually has really good console controls. Vanquish has really good console controls. Um, so I think it's proven to some extent that a shooter can be 
while PC might be preferable, a shooter can be a good choice as well. There you go. The Orc Boss. <laughs> That's the name of this guy. I don't think the Orc Boss is an actual boss, it's just for this tutorial. Uh, but thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. It'll be voice acting shortly after this wave is over. Should I keep talking for another minute? Something else I have to say? Uh, there's probably going to be some Monster Hunter. Like, there might be two Monster Hunter videos a day for a little bit. And then probably a whole bunch of Neo 3, and certainly a bunch of RA2. Um, RA2, RA4. So RE4 is a bigger game. The Mercenaries mode should be better fleshed out. And there are just uh, quite a few potential videos to make, so maybe I could make 100 RE4 videos? I don't know. Certainly if I have a pre-release, it is to my incentive to try to make more videos. I mean, I'm gonna have it a day pre-release, but I might have it a week pre-release, so. Are you certain this is the right place? Worry not, Your Grace. The Rook follows my commands to the letter. You should be quite aware of that by now. Of course! I did not mean to doubt your capabilities. They are nothing short of legendary. Then I trust you will have no issues with paying a suitable price for my services. A single barrel of gems should be enough. I thought that such mundane commerce was beneath you. I bowed my head into the mud and begged for your help. Is that not enough to show my appreciation? That payment is not for my benefit, but yours. So that you understand the value of my gesture. I appreciated your humility, but that alone is not enough. Saving a kingdom will always require sacrifices. Be happy that yours is paid in gold, rather than blood. You were right. Clever of them to sneak through the northern plains, while your forces are occupied in the mountains. Too clever. I wonder if those pieces are enough. Do not doubt these legends, Your Grace. Their names might have faded from history, but their power is very much alive within my tokens. You should leave now. Let me send you back. I prefer to work alone.
Yeah. <laughs> 